Hi, and welcome to video two for section 1.2. This is the second of four videos for this section. Video one, we talked about the essential functions. That's if they're just a base function, there's no shifting left, right, up, down, anything like that. The start of this video, we're going to talk about transformations. Now, you've done a ton of these up to this point. If you took 126, if you took 127, I know that you did in that point. If you didn't, if you just tested into 181, hopefully that means that you have, you're comfortable enough with this idea of the transformations. It goes into all the details and so forth on page 17 in the book of the types of transformations you can do. But I just want to sort of refresh your memory on a couple of them. The, the important ones in my eyes, which is the vertical and horizontal shifts. So for vertical shifts, we're going to have y is equal to some function, let's say x squared plus a value c, or y is equal to some function minus some value c. Well, because this value c, the amount that we're shifting, is not included within the function, that's what tells us this is a vertical shift. When this value of c is positive, it's moving the entire function up on the graph, just sliding it up that many units. When this is negative, it's shifting it down this many units. So for example, if I have y equals x squared plus 2, it's just taking the graph of the parabola, the x squared, and sliding it up the graph two units, just my vertical shift up or down. If I have y is equal to x squared minus 1, because it's outside of the main function, if I just block off the x squared, everything after that is just the shift. So the minus 1 just means it would slide this graph down one unit. The other is the horizontal shift. So in this situation, we're going to have y is equal to f, plus, uh, f of x plus c, or y is equal to f of x minus c. So now this shift has moved inside the function itself. And remember the acronym, IHOP. Pancake house, not in this case. It's what? I, inside, H, horizontal, OP, opposite. So if the value is inside the function, it's indicating a horizontal shift, and it's the opposite of what I see. So IE, if I have Y is equal to X plus 2 squared. So the squared is telling me that this is still a parabola, but because the 2 is now inside the parentheses, this is telling me it's a horizontal shift and it's the opposite of what I see. I see plus 2, which means that it's shifting this entire thing to the left 2 units. Still stays with the vertex on the x-axis, just moved it to the left 2 units. Or another possibility, y is equal to x minus 1 squared. So again, it's inside the parentheses, that's a horizontal shift. I see minus 1, which means the shift is plus 1 over to the right. And again, it goes into some stretching, shrinking, things like that. That's all on page 17. I'm not going to waste a lot of your time on that with the videos here. If you need it as a refresher, that's where you can go. We have combinations of functions. And specifically, these are our algebraic combinations. Plus, minus, multiply, divide. So let's say we have the following. If we're given f of x with domain of, we'll call it a, some set a, maybe it's all real numbers, Maybe if my function is a square root, it's just the positive numbers. But it has that as its domain, a. And another function, g of x, 
with domain, let's call it capital B. It might be the same as A, it's probably different, but it has its domain as B. Well, then we have the following. The first is the notation f plus g of x. So this means we are adding these functions together. So this is the same as just taking the f function and adding it to the g function. But when we do this, our domain could or will likely change for this combined function. And the new domain becomes the intersection of these two domains that we started with. And the easiest way to figure this out is draw it on a number line. When you do that, so let's say we have our number line here. Here's my zero. Let's say that, for example, A goes from here to here. And let's say B goes from here with an open circle this way. Well, the intersect what is where they overlap, which would be from here all the way up to where A ends. We want just where we have both of them within those dotted lines. That's my intersection. And again, we'll work an actual example, um, make it a little bit more clear as we're drawing on number lines, actually talking about numbers instead of sort of this uh, arbitrary values. If we have f minus g of x, well, just as above, the only difference is now it's f of x minus g of x. And be careful with the order. f minus g of x is different from g minus f, because of course these would be switched then. The domain is still the same, the intersection of the two domains that we began with. If we have fg of x, well, this is f times g, so it's what? It's just the f function times the g function. Again, the domain is the intersection of the two original. And the last one, division. So f over g of x, well this simply means take the f function, divide it by the g function. The domain from this one, this is where we got to be careful. It's the intersection, but I'm going to draw this vertical line and for future reference, and I'll remind you, but this is the mathematician's notation of such that. So, such that, or as long as, etc., etc. So, for the domain when we're dividing functions, the domain is the intersection of the original domains such that, or as long as, uh, g of x does not become zero. So, maybe this intersection didn't make g of x a problem before, because maybe g of x could have been 0. But now, all of a sudden, because I have g of x in the denominator, I can't have a 0 in the denominator. So that means it's the intersection, but I can't include that specific value if it, in fact, exists. So let's look at a problem. Actual numbers, see what we're talking about here. So. Example, let's say, so let f of x equal square root of x, let g of x equal the square root of 2 minus x. So for f of x, my domain is what? Well, x has to be positive, so x has to be greater than or equal to 0. For g of x, my domain is what? So my domain, 2 minus x, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So if I add x to both sides, that says 2 is greater than or equal to x. So if I flip-flop the sides, i got to switch the sign. The arrow is pointing to the x, so if I reverse them, it still has to point to the x. So it's basically just telling me x is less than or equal to 2. So hopefully you're okay with inequality algebra. If not, 
you know, maybe go back, try to refresh your memory on that a little bit, because we will be using that quite a bit throughout the semester as well. Okay, I'm going to erase this if you need it. Just pause, write it down quickly, or rewind. Now, we have that. So we were given this. We figured out the domain because we're going to need that because we want to find the following. We want to find f plus g of x. We want f minus g of x. We want f times g of x. And we want f divided by g of x. So for number one, oh, and find the domains. So for f plus g, we're just adding the functions together. So this is f of x, which is square root of x, plus g of x, so plus square root of 2 minus x. That's it. Not, nothing tricky about that. We're not going to try to combine them at that point. We can't really. So that's our addition of the functions. But we need the domains. So remember, how do we find the domains? Well, it's this intersection, and it's, like I told you, it's easier to draw it on the number line. So, let's say I have my number line here. The domain, let me switch color to try to make it a little bit easier. So then, let's call this one 1. We'll call the second g of x 2. So for domain 1, the domain of our function f, is x is greater than or equal to 0. So that means what? Because it's included, it gets a solid dot. Because it's greater than or equal to zero, it's going off to infinity to the right. For the g function, it says the domain is x is less than or equal to positive 2. So if I put my value 2 because it's included, less than or equal to, it also gets a solid dot. But less than means I'm going to negative infinity. So the intersection, the overlap, is what? Well, it's from this point to this point. Zero up to two. But does it get parentheses or does it get brackets? Well, zero's included on this one, zero's included on that one. So because it's not included on both, included on both, it gets a bracket. And at two, well, two's included with the green, two's included with the red. So it's included with the intersect as well. So 0 to 2 with brackets would be the domain for the addition function. For subtraction, I'm just subtracting these two. So f of x, which is square root of x, minus square root of 2 minus x. And it has the same domain. It's the intersection. The only one we have to be careful about is the division. So this is 0 to 2. For the multiplication, we just multiply these two together. So square root of x times 2 square root of 2 minus x. And again, I'm not going to get crazy about trying to multiply everything in between. If your instructor does, as long as they have the same roots, you can just multiply what's underneath. So I guess you could simplify this to 2x minus x squared. You just multiply those two pieces together. What's my domain? Well, it's still this intersection, 0 to 2, with the brackets. It doesn't really look like a bracket. Let's fix it. And lastly, the division. So we're just dividing these two pieces. So it's square root of x over square root of 2 minus x. Here's where we have to be careful. So it's the intersection, 0 to 2, but that value, whatever we pick, cannot make g of x equal to 0. So when we found this domain, we said what? Well, 2 minus x has to be less than or equal, I'm sorry, 2 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0. That gives us the domain for this guy. But if now, let's say that we're taking x is equal to 2, that becomes what? 2 minus 2 is 0, square root is 0. So that's fine for g by itself. But now g is in the denominator. So x cannot be 2 because if x is 2, what happens? It makes this entire denominator 0. 
So the domain for this one, 0, is still fine. And what you could really do then is say, OK, the intersection is 0 to 2, but are any of these points going to give us trouble? Well, if we put 0 in here, that's 0 in the numerator, that's fine. And square root of 2 in the denominator, that's fine. So we can use that value. But if I plug in 2, I get square root of 2 over 0. That's a problem. So we now have to put a parenthesis on that value and not include it in our domain. Otherwise, it's going to give us an undefined. All right, so that's our basic algebra of functions. Uh, that's the end of video two. Come on back, and we'll uh, look at the composite functions.